Hi everyone, this is Anson from AnsonAlex.com and welcome to part two of my 2013 video series on using Gmail. Part one of this video series served as an introduction to Gmail and a walkthrough of the user interface. This video is going to talk about sending, receiving, and composing emails in Gmail. And the next video in the series is going to talk about email organization, labeling emails, archiving emails, and that sort of thing. So I hope this series helps. If it does, I would really appreciate a like on the videos. And if you want to see more of them, go ahead and subscribe to my channel. Enjoy it, everybody. When it comes to sending and receiving emails in Gmail, Google tries to make it as simple as possible. To get started, let's talk about composing emails. You'll notice that on the top left of your screen, above the inbox, you've got this big red Compose button, and it's pretty self-explanatory. That's how you can start a new email. So if I go ahead and click that button, you'll notice that a new email pops up in the bottom right part of my screen. Now this is a change that some of you may have noticed because when you used to hit this Compose button, it would turn this entire window into a new email, a new message. And a lot of people have gotten confused and actually don't like the fact that this new message appears in the bottom right corner of your screen, but there's actually some very useful things about it. And what people don't realize is as you're typing this message, because you still have access to the rest of your email, you can actually navigate through your email. So you could open up an email. You could go to a different section of your mailbox. You could go to your important emails and open up an email in there. So if you need information from one of your emails, while you're composing an email, you can do that. So that is probably uh, the biggest advantage that this little pop-up message gives you. Now, if you really don't like this pop-up, you can actually change it by going to the bottom right and clicking on this little drop-down arrow that says more options. And then you can choose to temporarily switch back to the old Compose. Now, I can't guarantee that that option is always going to be available because as you can see, Google's saying it's temporary. In other words, at some point in the future, you're no longer going to be able to use the old Compose. But for right now, if you want to, you can. Getting back to actually composing a message, when you first open this up, it's pretty self-explanatory. It's only got three fields visible to us. Two, subject, and then the body of the email. So when we write the email to somebody, we're just gonna go ahead and type an email address. I'll just type in example at test.com. Our subject can be anything we want. This is a test. Now, you'll notice that when I clicked out of this to field, uh, this CC and BCC, these options disappeared. Watch, if I click out, they're no longer there. But this is basically how you could send a carbon copy or a blind carbon copy to other email recipients. So if I click on CC, a CC field is going to appear. And if I click on BCC, a BCC field is going to appear. For those of you that don't know, if I were to CC test at AnsonAlex.com, test at AnsonAlex.com would receive this email. And example at test.com would see that test at AnsonAlex.com received this email. If, however, I were to take this test at AnsonAlex.com and put it in the BCC field, it's kind of cool, you can click and drag here in Gmail, they would both receive the email, but example at test.com would not see that test at AnsonAlex.com received the email. So that's a good way to forward things along, keep people in the loop without having the primary recipient know that somebody else is reading the email. Uh, so that's how you can do that. And then obviously you've got the body of the email down here. This is where you can type the entire email. Now there is a way to get email signatures here in Gmail. You actually set it up through your settings, but I will show you how to specifically do that later on in this video series when I go over the Gmail settings. But if you do want to quickly uh, get one set up for the time being, you can go into the settings following this link, and on the first page there, there will be a section for your signature. Now you'll notice that uh, in previous versions of Gmail, we used to have all of our composition options up here at the top. And when I say that, I mean like bold, italics, font size, all of that sort of thing. Well, now they're down here at the bottom. So you can see this first link that has an A with an underline is called formatting options. And if I click that, you'll now see that all these different formatting options pop up for me so I could change the font so I could highlight this text. 
I could change the font however I wanted to. I could change the size of it. These are the same options that were previously in Gmail, obviously bold, italics, underline. Keyboard shortcuts do work, so command B on a Mac or control B on a Windows will make your text bold. You can change the text color. You can add numbered lists, bulleted lists, and then you can also change your alignment. If you do a bunch of formatting changes and you don't like them, you could always hit this remove formatting button and it will take it back to the default look. And again, just to point this out, you can also change the default font and size and color of your text in your Gmail settings, which again, we will look at later on in this video series. If you want to add attachments to your email, you can do so by clicking on the paperclip here at the bottom. You'll notice when I mouse over this paperclip, a few other icons appear. One is the ability to insert files using Google Drive. So if you're a Google Drive user, you could go ahead and you could click on this option and you could directly insert a file that you've created in Google Drive to your email here in Gmail. If you want to see detailed instructions on doing that, you probably want to check out my Google Drive tutorial series that I did for 2013. Uh, it's basically four primary videos and then uh, some additional videos that I've done since, but that will talk to you about all the different ways to share files from Google Drive. I'll link it in the description of this video. You can see the next option is to insert photos. So if I click on that, I can just choose to take a photo from my actual computer or from a web address go back going back and then I could also insert smileys and if you just want to do a normal document insert like probably most of you do you could have just clicked on the original paper clip and it will ask you to attach files from your computer so you could see you could do that once you're ready you can go ahead and hit the send button I'm actually going to delete out example at test.com for this because I don't know if that is a real email address, but I know that test at ansonalex.com isn't. I haven't set that up yet, but I do own ansonalex.com, obviously. You should check it out. So I can hit send. You can see up here it says sending, and then it says your message has been sent. If I want to review that message at a later date, I could go ahead and go to my sent mail section of Gmail, and I could find my message. You can see I've actually already gotten a return message on that because it's saying that the delivery failed because that email address does not exist. So that is how you can compose messages here in Gmail. Now, continuing on with this video, I would like to talk about receiving messages here in Gmail. So I actually sent myself a test email earlier today, and you can see that it has an attachment, and I can see that because it has a paperclip over here to the right of the email. Most email systems use that paperclip to denote when an email has an attachment. And again, it is in bold, as I spoke about in the first video in this series about the user interface. Bold emails are unread emails, and it has automatically marked this as important for me. When you first start using Gmail, as I spoke about again in the first series, uh, it's going to mark a lot of emails as important. If that email is not important, remember, take off the important marker so that Gmail starts to learn which emails are important and which emails aren't for your specific Gmail account. But I'm just going to go ahead and I'm going to click on this email to open it up. You can see here it is. Notice that in a lot of emails that you get in Gmail, you're going to see this section up here at the top that says images are not displayed. And Gmail does that because there are certain hackers that have found ways to embed viruses in images. It's very, very uncommon. Uh, but Gmail does filter out the images. It also helps load your email faster, especially if you're on a mobile device. However, if you know that the sender is safe, I know who this person is, it's myself, you can hit display images below. And if you're going to be receiving multiple emails from this person, you can hit always display images from that particular person. So if I click that, you'll see, I think there was an email in the signature or something here, there it is. Upon receiving this email, I can see the subject of the email. I can see who sent it. There's the email address. I could see when it was sent. I could see that it has an attachment again. Here's the body of the text. This little dot, dot, dot thing, as you just saw me click on, is where Gmail puts signatures. So this is also a new update of Gmail here in 2013. They are not displaying signatures unless you click on this little dot, dot, dot. You can see there's my signature. I think it's done to try and cut down messages, make them easier to read, more efficient, although I have heard a lot of users complaining about this feature, so it will be interesting to see if Gmail gives us an option to turn that on or off here in 2013. But for now, if you want to see the signature, you can click on the dot, 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 and there it is. Then, of course, down here at the bottom, I've got my attached file, so I could choose to just view it in my browser as a PDF, or I could download it. This is my 
resume actually. So if I view it in my browser, or I could also choose to download it. Now, if you want to reply or forward this email, you'll notice that down here at the bottom, you've got a couple of quick links to either hit reply, and then I can reply directly to Aaron Alexander. Or if I discard this draft, I could have hit forward and I could have forwarded this email to somebody else. Notice when you do hit forward or reply, let me hit reply one more time, that the original message is copied. So if you don't want that original message that was sent to you copied, you can go ahead and delete that out and send a completely blank message. Now the last thing I'd like to show you, I'm just going to discard this draft real quick here, is if you are looking for more options when handling emails, you can always click on this drop down in the top right corner. It's got some of the same options we've seen. We can reply, we can forward, we could print the email, we could add Aaron Alexander to the contacts list. Now, as I mentioned in the first video in this series, Aaron Alexander is automatically added to my contacts, although there's no information about him. There's no first name, last name, address, phone number. He's just added in as a contact that I have had email communication with. So if I were to go to send him an email, his email address would automatically pop up. But if I wanted to specify more information about him, I could specifically add him to the contacts list by clicking on this drop down. I could report it as spam. Alternatively, I could report it as spam up here. If you're looking for more options to do something with an email, check this drop down list. Also notice that there are a number of options up here at the top. In the next video in this series, I'm going to talk about organizing our emails. So that's going to involve labels and folders. Um, so you can see that's where these drop downs are going to come into play. I'm also going to talk more in depth about message archiving. Uh, but basically what that does is it leaves an email in your email account so you can find it by searching or going to the all mail folder, but it removes it from your inbox. So we'll talk about that more in depth in the next video. The next button is how you can report this email as spam. I talked about that in the last video. And then if you really do want to delete this email, you can hit the trash can symbol and it will send it to your trash. I'm going to go back to my inbox so you can see that this email is no longer marked as unread and I've done what I need to do with it. So I hope this video helped. If it did, I would really appreciate a thumbs up here on YouTube. If you want to see more technology tips and tutorials, remember to subscribe to my YouTube channel. I'm going to be coming out with at least two to five more videos specifically regarding using Gmail here in 2013. So if you want to hear specific things in those videos, go ahead and get in the comments section as quick as you can and let me know what you're looking for and I'll try and work those into the future videos. Again, I hope this really helped and I look forward forward to seeing you next time. This is Anson from AnsonAlex.com.